Hello and welcome back to the cockpit of the FA-18 Hornet. It's been a few days uh, since I've done a video for DCS. Uh, the reason for that is I've just I've, I've not been motivated to do anything with it. <laughs> uh, I've been working on a campaign which is supposed to be a flight school for the FA-18 Hornet. Uh, the campaign itself, the, the, the skeleton of it is done. I just I have to go back and do all the testing and stuff. I've just really not been motivated to do it. And I thought I was going to start doing some of the missions and stuff, but I also just don't feel motivated to do that either. So I, I have enough other videos that I need to get done that by the time I get done with all of that stuff, I'm just I'm kind of spent for the day. So DCS is definitely going to be one of those things where it's every once in a while. Um, but for today, we're going to I'm just going to take you guys along for my play testing of my carrier relocation mission. Um, I haven't felt like dealing with my air to air ground, my air to air school portion of it. So I'm just I'm skipping to the first couple of missions of the carrier relocation. So let's go ahead and hop into this and hear what our instructor has to say. It's finally time to go out the carrier. You've already practiced all the skills you need to get a good trap. So just do all the things you've done so far, except remember to report inbound at 50 miles, then make your CU at 10 call once in range. I'll have some final instructions once we're close to the carrier, but for now, get into the air and home in on the tacking of the ship. Okay. So, for the tacking of the ship, I haven't gotten around to putting mission cards in any of this stuff. The tacking is 74 X ray. So, let's get our tacking. Enter on. Get our tacking set up. Right, let's get into the air and head out to the Stennis. So the premise of this mission is is that uh, at this point in the camp, at this point in the flight school, you finished your navigation block, you finished your air to ground block, you finished your air to air block. This is the final block of training where you relocate out to the aircraft carrier to actually do the landings that you've been practicing all throughout the the course of training. So there'll be some explanations of things as we go out. I generally try to do explanations in the air rather than on the ground whenever possible so that, you know, you feel like you're getting something done. Okay. You will be unarmed for this particular for the next couple of flights because there's nothing to fight and it doesn't really make sense to have ordnance on the plane when you're going to be practice practicing something as dangerous as carrier landings. I'm doing my best to make this series as realistic as I understand things to be. I was not a Navy fighter pilot. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not, I was not a military pilot of any kind. I have my private pilot certificate, and that's about the extent of my real-world pilot knowledge. So, I don't claim to know anything. But I'm doing the best I can based off of, you know, research and stuff that I've done over the years and things like that. Let's get our landing gear up. Get ourselves turned around towards where the Stennis is going to be. Okay, let's get our heading bug turned over towards where that is. That way we can get a nice heading select autopilot because there's no sense in I'm not a big believer in manual flight just for manual flight, just for the sake of manual flight. You have an autopilot there for a reason, use it. Okay. I don't remember what I what I put in for the briefing there, so let me look at the messages history. Okay. Yeah, I think I put I think I put radius. Uh, I put radius, or I put uh, moving trigger zones around the carrier at and made them certain distances to trigger instructions. So, Stennis is currently 139 miles away. Well, no, it is, but or it's not because my TACAN decided it's just not going to. There we go. Now it's updating. Sometimes it does that. The, the tack end will just freeze up on you and it won't... It won't give you information anymore. So... Let's 
do some time compression. I believe 50 miles is the first trigger zone, because that's when you enter the carrier's controlled airspace. And we'll just level off here at 20,000. Okay, there's an autopilot. Do our barometric hold. Speed things up a little bit. So up to this point, you know, you've been practicing case one recoveries ad nauseum. The end of every mission has a case one recovery at the airfield. So if you've gone through the course mission by mission over and over again, you've done case one landing after case one landing after case one landing after case one landing. Should be old hat by now. You've done a couple of case three recoveries and there will be a couple of case three practices um, or a couple of case three recoveries while you're out here at the carrier. But for the most part, it's uh, case one. You're doing a bunch of case one. So, I, like I said, I think once we get down to 50 miles, there'll be a trigger there. It's been, it's been, it's been at least a week, I think, since I've looked at any of this. I've, I've, got, I've really lost my motivation to work on this. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'll get it back after Christmas. It's just, it's been a lot of work already so far, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not even, I'm probably only halfway done as far as the amount of work that needs to get done. Just getting the, just getting the missions in place. Now I got to go through and test them and verify things and it's just uh, and then of course we gotta we gotta hope that the okay, okay we're 50 working. miles cool. out so report inbound don't forget to set your tacking course to the brc you're given so atc stennis marshall zero one zero marky mops zero eight nine four four five angels two zero point five state one three point one gotta turn off that heading bug and we also have to set our uh, we also have to set our comms to the Stennis. So let me get that Stennis. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Microphone. Stennis tower is one two seven point five. So let's get uh, one two seven five zero zero. Enter. Now let's try it. ATC Stennis inbound. Marshall zero one zero. Marky Mops 087440, Angels 20.5, State 010. Okay, so now we're just waiting to get close enough to see the carrier. It's exactly the same as every landing you've done for the whole course, except for two things. The first is that this time you'll lower your tail hook to catch the arresting wires, which you can do now by lowering the lever on the right side of the cockpit. The other is that you'll apply full throttle once you touch down on the carrier so you can go around in the likely event that you fail to catch a wire. The process for a go around is the same as what we practiced on the very first pattern practice we did. The last part of the landing involves another thing we couldn't simulate at the airfield, the eye flaws. It is a visual indicator on the ship that shows how high or low you are in relation to the optimal glide slope to the carrier and it's a critical component of a good trap. If the yellow point of light, or ball, is above the green line, you're high. If it's lower, then you're low. You want to try to keep it right on the green line as you descend to the carrier, but it's better to be a little high than sink too far and risk a ramp strike. This is why throttle control is so critical. You'll also get verbal callouts from the landing signal officer, or LSO, letting you know if you're high or low, left or right. Once you're on final approach, or in the groove, rotate your focus from the ball, to angle of attack, to your horizontal lineup to the carrier, and back again until you're on the deck. If you're told to wave off, simply add full power and repeat the pattern we practiced on day one to go around to try again. Stay calm and keep that throttle moving, and everything will be fine. 
Yep, ideally. Okay, cool. All right. So yeah, <laughs> I went back through and fixed all of my text boxes to make sure that they didn't just hang out there like that. So let's go ahead and well, let me make sure. I got to make sure I can actually see them at ten. Okay. I see something off in the distance. That's probably the lead destroyer. So here in a second, we should be able to do right, uh, switch to our radar altimeter. We're gonna go ahead and do our CU at ten call. Zero one zero, CU at ten. Update state switched out. Zero one zero, state one two point five. So give me just a second. I want to uh, let's see. I forgot to set my DCS profile for my joystick. And I think I think I have it. I thought I had it set up to do. Report. See you at ten and execute yeah. your case one recovery. I don't have my zoom thing set up for doing it in VR. Okay, let's slow it down. I can't tell what that is because I'm not able to zoom. It's the biggest looking thing, so I'm guessing that's what that is. Because in VR, maybe you can tell on the on the on the screen right now, but okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the carrier. Altitude. All right. Did, I'm pretty sure they told me signal was Charlie. I was too busy screwing around with that. We haven't been told. We haven't been given a signal as Charlie yet. But ideally, once we get within five miles or so, it should give it to us. Tower zero one zero. Overhead Angels four point five. State one two point four. Zero one zero. Tower Roger. BRC one zero nine. Let's get our scale down a little bit more. Zero, one, zero. Not that it matters. Fix my centering, because I find that looking up when I do my centering moves me a little bit more forward in the car. Yeah, I should have stayed outside the Marshall stack there. I don't I'm not really paying attention, but that's alright. This is mostly for testing purposes, not necessarily for doing it right. We just need to get down to 800 feet. Try to keep our speed under control as we descend. Oh, I didn't put a group of destroy. I didn't put any. I didn't put a group of anything in here, anyways. Okay, we're a little slow. That's okay. Take a look at the ship. Little, little high, little fast. Get out to about a mile. I mean, technically, you could break here, but I generally wait about a mile. All right, here we go. Ourselves all the way around. Okay, not too shabby. Right around, right around the height we need to be. Get our angle of attack all set up. Carrier, I am way, way too close at this point. Let's get our throttle pushed back to where it needs to be. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra room because I screwed up the... Because I screwed up the... Uh, screwed up my downwind.
peaked a little early there, but because I screwed all of this up, I felt the need to. Yeah, we're way we way overshot. We're just going to have to go around. Get our speed back up. We'll try that again. <laughs> Climb back up. I don't know why I screwed that up so hard. I've done a lot of these. paying attention to what the reciprocal heading is, I didn't figure it out. C course. I am not doing this very well. So what what is the reciprocal of 110? I can't I can't do math like that in my head. <laughs> Gotta wait for the little arrow thing to come around. Close to the carrier, but that's all right. Really high. I'm not managing my throttle very well. That's the problem. We are like really high. As we balloon up, breaking my own rules here. All right. Well, that was the Good ugliest. Trap. Reduce throttle to idle. Raise your hook.
and fold the wings using the lever on the right. Find a good place to park, then execute a complete shutdown to end the lesson. Give me mine. Steering. Your nose wheel steering is not turned on. Um, what is the control for that? Nose. Undesignate nose wheel steer switch. Uh, I don't know how to turn that on. And, of course, my window's in the way. Ugh! The irritatingness of them putting all the buttons at the very bottom of the screen makes it so you have to do certain things a certain way. It's really annoying. Okay, I can't... I can't... Why is my nose wheel steering turned off? Uh, did I damage something? <laughs> I probably damaged something. the nose wheel steering to work. So I guess we're just going to have to call that an episode. At least I verified that my moving trigger zone works and that landing on the carrier works. And pretty much everything works. You just, you, you go over in that direction, park over there somewhere. And then once you, uh, did I press, did I say press IP? I think it's once you shut the aircraft down at end submission. But anyways, um, yeah. Well. Anyways, uh, I've rambled on long enough. Hopefully you got something out of that. That's the uh, relocation to the Stennis thing. So uh, be sure to click the like button if you thought that was valuable. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to help, uh, or if you'd like to know when the next video comes out. And I'm looking for cool ideas for exclusive perks to provide for those of you who have an interest in supporting the channel. Please leave your suggestions for that along with your feedback for the video down in the comments. Again, thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you for the next one.